everybody. It's me, Julianne Hartman from The Journey. And I'm so excited today because I have a very special guest, Jolene, with me today, all the way from the Netherlands. And mm. she, and we all know the Netherlands because of one of our teachers, Cindy Mazes, who also plays a big part in this story as well. And so thank you so much, Jolene, for coming on the show. I really appreciate you coming on and sharing your testimony with our incredible viewers. Thank you for having me. <laughs> thank so, you so much. You are a beautiful girl, my gosh. Um, how do you say your last name? Because I don't want to get it wrong. Uh, Van Roosmalen. Oh my gosh. I'm just going to call you Jolene. <laughs> that's fine. No problem. <laughs> oh my goodness. That's a long one. Okay. Uh, <laughs> keep it yeah. at Jolene. Um, yeah. right, so Jolene, fine. I know there's a lot to your story. You're not that old, but you've got a lot in your story. So we're going to start <laughs> from the very beginning. So were you raised a Christian? Did you know about Jesus in your childhood? Uh, no, I didn't. My parents were atheists, um, so they didn't raise me uh, with faith or with anything. So, yeah, I didn't know about Jesus or nothing. Now, I always am curious about that. Did any of your friends talk about Jesus? Like, had you heard about Jesus? Never, never. What? Only sometimes with, with Christmas, then, yeah, we, we would go to church but yeah, it's more Catholic here in the area where I live. So we saw Marie and not Jesus. <laughs> so uh, no, I didn't know much about Jesus. So yeah, I liked Christmas for the presents. Yeah. Well, it's so yeah. interesting. So you went to church just because you felt like you were doing a good thing if you went at Christmas time. Is that really why? No, no when my parents got divorced we uh, moved to another uh, part of the city and I had to go to uh, a Catholic uh, school um, but I was not allowed to the teachings because my parents were not Catholic so I only the the, the kids who were raised in uh, Catholic families they could join the teachings <laughs> that's crazy right <laughs> Oh my gosh, that's terrible. Yeah. Wow. So I didn't know anything. And sometimes we had to go to church with school and then I saw the priests with the 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 smoke and their garments and I thought it was just a play. It Scary. didn't it, Yeah, it was not really it didn't attract me no well it's still scary to me so. <laughs> yeah I can imagine <laughs> oh my gosh all right so um well I, I always get so like interested in hearing like because it you know when people swear I don't know about your language but when people swear they usually say Jesus Christ right yeah. Now, yes, did you yes, hear I know him from yes okay see me too <laughs> that's how I yeah. do it was a customer yeah. in my house <laughs> Yeah, who's this Jesus everybody talks about? <laughs> his name is really popular because why would you get mad and then, you know, yeah. say his name? You don't even know him. So, all right. Yeah. Well, then, so now you were uh, raised, obviously, in the Netherlands and you yeah. were went to a Catholic school. And yeah. so what was your life like? Were you a good kid, uh, a not so good kid? Oh, I think I was a pretty kid. <laughs> no, I was not really rebellious. I think I was really sensitive and uh, uh, really from a young age searching for truth. So um, uh, I remember when I was like nine or 10 years old that, that I actually asked my parents like, oh, that, does God really exist? And uh, so I was... I liked I liked to I was really fond of reading and uh yeah I think I was really an easy kid for them so <laughs> yeah so there were not a lot of problems but yeah but there was not a lot of faith in my life but there was a lot no that's not the truth because we had a lot of new age <laughs> that's also faith but not the right one of course right Faith in the <laughs> thing. So question then, are you then, um, did you ever have any friends that were Christian? Did you meet anybody that was a Christian? Not before I got 20. Gosh. Nobody told me anything before I was 20 years old. 
Oh my gosh. My okay. So why why were your parents atheists? Usually what I've heard is someone was, you know, mad at God. And so wherever right. whenever it started, way down, you know, the line in our family tree, somebody got offended at God and said, that's it. You know, so do you know why your parents were atheists? Yes, I know. Um, from my father's family, uh, they lived in a little village and they had like a ju jewelry uh, and a, a store and people could only buy in your store when you went to church on Sunday. And they thought that was really religious and stupid. So they, after a while, they decided not to go to church anymore. My father really thought that was stupid for people to think like you can only buy somewhere if you go to church. Uh, and um, so my father, he, he, yeah, for him, it didn't feel real to him, of course. And, and it was also a Catholic church. And my mom's family they didn't believe for more generations so they they just didn't believe but my 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 grandmother she uh she died last year she was 99 she was catholic but she really believed in jesus so she was the only one left but she never told me but my father told me that she still believed so yeah wow that's so interesting you know I mean, obviously, that is very, as we call religious Christians, when we say it's religious, that means it's very, you know, strict and or and, and not not so much strict, but it's man. It's, it's a man. law. Oh. It's my it's man's righteousness. It's not God's yeah, right. Yeah. So we yeah. know that. So, yeah. And that's what's so dumb. But um, all right. So you went through life not having a savior and not having God, which I didn't either. No, oh. it was. Yeah, I was 37 when I got saved. So yeah. I know what that's like, trust me. Um, yeah. so what, so now tell me you went through school, um, you, how long have you been married? Oh, um, I've been married 10 years this year. Okay, great. And so <laughs> when, now let's hear about your conversion, how you met Jesus. Let's start off with that. That's probably the best. Um, then I have to start a little bit earlier because yeah I was really into the new age and that was because my my parents got divorced and I got a stepfather and he believed that he could speak with dead people so um and he did some crazy things <laughs> so uh in a wait, young wait, wait, age wait, I, I have to stop you there wait a minute <laughs> so you, yeah. your, your, your stepdad believed that he could talk to dead people yeah. What did your mom think of that? Was that okay? Is that yes. <laughs> um, oh, sorry, mom, if you're looking. <laughs> but yes, she thought that was okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah. And, um, wow. So then that, so he was obviously new age. So then that means that you all yeah. became new age as well. Yes. Yes. My mom, she was already interested uh, in new age before she got divorced, but um yeah I think it got worse when uh, he came in our lives so but there were a lot of strange things and sometimes he even knew things he could not have known and then he said like uh you can see I can talk to the spirits <laughs> so he was a really scary person yes and now that you know better you're like well there's only one and he's holy <laughs> yes of course of All course right, so what does that mean when you were in new age and your mom, like, what did you guys do? Like, were there rituals? Were there seances? Like, what was it? I think I, I did like all the things you can imagine with new age. So that's really bad, but it started because of him, because he, he, he made me really, yeah, fearful. He, he was really scary. So and I I felt things in my bedroom when I went to sleep when I was young. I think I was about seven or eight years old. And then then maybe younger, I don't know. I have to ask my mother. <laughs> but um, when I went to bed at night, then I just felt that there were things around me where he was talking about. So I was always really fearful. But somehow I knew that... Yeah, he was not right, but there was more. So I knew there is something more than we can see. 
Um, and but it started, I think, when I was four years old. I, I, it's a really uh, sensitive thing to talk about, but I was really fearful to go to the toilet. <laughs> so I did. I wanted to. Uh, I, I didn't want to go there. <laughs> so, but I had to go to school. So I, I it was necessary that. Uh, I needed to go to the toilet. So she saw in the newspaper an article about somebody who uh, says spells to like a four. I don't know if it's the right word, the four. And they put it under my bed, under my uh, my my mattress. And uh, the day after it, I I had no I the problem was gone. I was going to the toilet now without any fear of pro or problems so that was really scary <laughs> when I look back my that it actually worked but after that I got more problems so I wasn't having any problems with going to the toilet but I got really severe stomach aches and other problems so I guess something else happened I don't know how it works <laughs> I don't know how it works but something was going on and i think because of this my mom met this guy so uh yeah so okay so, I, this is, sorry <laughs> yeah, this is a new one for me all right so <laughs> mom saw an ad for someone that had that could cast spells or to like a witch doctor kind of a thing yeah yeah. Okay, so then they gave you something tangible to put under your bed. A foil. I don't know. If it's the right. It's like foil that you use for baking, like a foil that you. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. And then like, they put it under my mattress, and then the next day, I had no problems with going to the toilet anymore. Why were you, I mean, without being too detailed, why were you afraid to go to the bathroom? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I I had more fears, I think, but um, this was one of them, and I was just afraid. I I wanted to, I wanted to stay having wearing an uh, uh, a a how do you call that a napkin or no a diaper What's the name? Or a, a diaper yes. <laughs> Sorry, I'm from the Netherlands, so this is not my native language. I mean, you're doing <laughs> so well. You I can you really are speaking very well. So. Yeah, don't but, worry. Uh, so, I I want to uh, keep my diaper on and not going to the big toilet. So um, yeah, okay. and my mom got it fixed by going to a scary doctor. Okay, wow. All right, so <laughs> how that worked? But then you started getting stomach aches. So yeah. um, you know that's what's the difference between when God heals you and when something other than that. Yeah make you think you've been healed but other things come in as a play as as a part of that so um all right so you said that you were very fearful now did the fear start when the stepdad came into the picture or was fear kind of always lingering i think i was sensitive for it but it really got bad when he came in our lives yes okay. so yeah now yeah was there anything that happened like in your life that you like that made you fearful or you just I don't know, like, were you shy? Were you <laughs> spy kids? Um, I always thought, like, why is there sickness on earth? And why uh, are we dying? And th that was because a, a, a really close friend of ours was really sick. She had, like, a, a, a lung disease, an incurable lung disease. She, she actually died when she was 18 years old. And... But I knew that she was not, um, I knew, yeah, every day I knew that she could die. And I was aware of that from a young age. So I think that that scared me. Yeah. Okay. So fear you know of death. Yeah, yeah, that does happen. So you had a fear of death. I can totally see how that would happen. As a little kid, when you can't, nothing is explained to you, you're just seeing death. Yeah you thinking well that could happen to me too or my mom or you know yeah you know. and in our family they didn't believe in god so there was nothing after death so and they didn't tell me like oh you're going to heaven <laughs> or something no it right. was just nothing yeah. <laughs> yeah so now do you have siblings 
Uh, no, I don't. No, oh. because my, my parents got divorced when I was five years old. So, uh, yeah. all right. All right. So now, um, now you're going through school and you're, you're having a lot of stomach issues. You said like, are, would yeah. you consider those food allergies or what? Uh, yes, but it took me a long time to figure out where I was allergic to. I I think I never really figured it out, but I knew I was really allergic to uh, some types of herbs and garlic and uh, uh, parsley. And uh, and um, when you, yeah, so just a lot of herbs, I think. But I think there were more allergies, but I couldn't find out all of them. So, yeah. A lot of times when I ate, then I felt really bad after it, like having such severe stomach aches that I could faint next to the toilet. So uh, that was pretty bad. Oh <laughs> I thought that my labors were easy <laughs> because of those pains. So, uh, yeah. Why? Oh, my gosh. And now you have two daughters now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Wow. Well, you would definitely know with labor, you know, if you're saying that the, the yeah. pain was worse than the labor, that's bad. Yeah. Oh. I'd rather do that than the stomach aches. Yes. So did you just <laughs> live with it? Did you go see doctors? What did you do? Yes. I, I did everything to solve it. I went to the doctor, to the hospital, to homeopathic uh, stuff. I did like everything I could uh, to stop it, but nothing worked really. No, mm. I had some medicines, uh, Don Peridon for my stomach, but yeah, it didn't really work. No. Oh my gosh. All right. So now where are we at with your mom as you're getting older? Does your mom staying with the, no, no. After, after three years, eventually she, uh, she quit seeing him. Yes, that was really nice. <laughs> I actually have a really nice stepfather now. So, uh, <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Yeah. All right, so then they, all right. So then they broke up. So where are you at now in your life? As far as uh, what age are you? They've now they've broken up. Did you see also weird things happen even after he left because it was still in the house or. Um, I think I had still, I always had like problems in my room at night. Uh, I had that for a long time and uh, after a while, I was getting a lot of nightmares and stuff. So that was not really nice. And um, in 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 our home, it was more peaceful, I think. But I, I was still searching. Even when I was afraid, I was still searching for answers. So I still... Uh, I wanted to figure out if I could speak to those ghosts also. <laughs> it didn't really work, but <laughs> I tried. And uh, and uh, I did witchcraft, like the Wicca, the, 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 I don't know if you know it, but it's like the, the white version of it. Like we are the, we were the good uh, witches. <laughs> <laughs> now I think I'm crazy, <laughs> but um, and the good but, one, right? <laughs> we thought we were the good one because once because we did only positive spells. Yes, <laughs> yeah. So, so that was that one way, of Hold on, did was there a group of you good witches? Sorry, is there a group of you that were good witches? I was doing that with a friend of mine, so. There actually are a group of people who are just running in the forest and uh, hugging trees and stuff. <laughs> but um, I had one friend where I did it with, and I was, I think I was, then I was about 13 years old. Yeah, really young for that. But yes. You guys would cast good spells. Yeah. Yeah. And we were afraid to do bad spells because if someone was harmed by it, you would uh get like you would it would come back to you it will oh, come okay. back to you three times so then it you would get worse of it, worse of it so so it, it was really crazy wicca is the name i i think some people know what wicca is yeah yeah I, i've heard of it i don't know too much about it um i thank god i don't know how i didn't go and get into that because i would have <laughs> gotten into anything in my life before G <laughs> so i did so um, how long were you into new age? Like until what age? Until I got saved. Oh my so, God. 
um, I on my when I was 20 then finally someone who was a Christian came into my life she was a colleague of mine she went to Australia for three years doing the Hillsong Bible School there and she was full of Jesus and you can see it and when we were cussing like Jesus when we said that then yeah. she was really mad and you saw her face like just getting angry and uh, and uh, but she well, I but I didn't care about someone having uh, a relig religion or something I I thought not a problem for me so and I really liked her so I actually became friends with her um went to the movies one night and that was the first time she talked to me about Jesus and she said um the only way to come to God is Jesus and that but that was the only thing she said so I didn't really understand it I thought what she's talking about this is a crazy story <laughs> what do you like the only way you can come to God is through Jesus I thought okay that's a strange story so it was interesting but I yeah, I didn't, I didn't understand it. I think she was a little bit afraid to tell the whole story. And um, then I figured out that um, I, I, when I was younger, I was a dancer. I, I did like show dancing and dancing with an artist on the back, uh, the, like background dancer and stuff. I did for famous Dutch people. You would, you wouldn't know them, but. Um, uh, <laughs> But um, one of the dancers, um, my friend, where I uh, drove to the with to the bookings, she I figured out she was a Christian also, but she didn't talk about it a lot. Um, she told me that she was baptized when she was about fifteen years old, but that she was not doing a lot with her faith anymore. And uh, um, so sometimes she talked about it, but not really uh telling yeah the details of it but then one night she called me and she was really upset because uh her boyfriend had um hanged himself in the room next to next to her and he he died actually that night so that that was really terrible so she called me and she was she was totally freaking out and I wanted to be like a good friend. So every day I, I drove to her and then um, then she really got back to her faith. She, she searched uh, for Jesus again. And I saw that and I, I saw that she was having some peace with that. And that, 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 yeah. And one day we were walking outside and we walked uh, next to a graveyard and she said to me do you feel that and i said what what do you mean she said you do you feel the goosebumps and i said you don't believe in that you are a christian you don't believe in goosebumps and she said huh of course i believe in that god is a spirit and i thought huh god is a spirit where are you talking about and because yeah when i went to catholic church i didn't feel a thing it, it was all a play for me so uh, uh and then she said uh, uh god must be a miracle worker to make a world world like this so he, he must be like the biggest miracle worker there is to make a world like this and make us and i thought that's never i never heard about this like I couldn't see God as something really spiritual because I believed in the spiritual world and I never saw God as spiritual. I thought I saw it as something that wasn't real in the Catholic church. So I was thinking about that and I, we walked to her house and she told her mom uh, about that. She, she, we talked about God a little and then her mom, she asked me, did somebody ever tell you the good news, the gospel? And I said, what's that? <laughs> no. <laughs> and I, I was 23 here, I think. Yes, 23. And, and then she just told me in real plain, um, yes, you know, we sinned. So, uh, yeah, 
we needed to uh, have a savior. And God sent us a savior as Jesus. He died for us so that we can have a relationship with God again. Do you believe that? And I thought, that's that's a totally crazy story. But somehow I just thought, yeah, that's the truth. And then I I I just knew, okay, uh, God is real. And they asked me to go to church with them on Sunday. And I was sitting on the in the back, and, uh, and they wanted to pray for my friend because, of course, uh, yeah, they wanted to help her a bit and uh, giving uh, and, and giving her some prayer. So they asked her in front and said, "Yeah, can you all you you your friend of can you come to the front also because we want to pray for you also because you were such a good friend. So uh, uh, do you want to come?" And then I walked in front of the church and I said to God, if you are really, if you are really real, I want to know now. So the pastor, he, he prayed for me and I just felt the presence of presence of God coming over me. And I, it actually freaked me out because it was a bit scary to me because it was more spiritual than I ever uh, experienced before. So, uh, um, so, yeah, I really, for me, it really feels like I met God there in that church on the day, on that day. So, um, yeah, that is how I met Jesus. <laughs> but, I mean, like, because you'd gone through the whole demonic thing with the new age yeah. and all that. So you really were impacted by the love of Jesus. There's no love in the other because it's all demonic. Yes, 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 yes. And, and. I really felt that presence and love of, from him when that pastor prayed for me. I it just it was physical. I could feel it physical. So uh, I couldn't deny it anymore. Wow. Yeah, that is amazing. Nothing, but in that moment I knew nothing. So it's sixteen years ago now. So uh, I yeah. love. That. Well, guess what? We're already out of time for the first episode. <laughs> That's how fast it goes, but we're going to come back on the next episode. Um, you don't want to miss this story because we're now going to get into the healing part of this, which is going to be awesome. But wow, what a what an incredible be beginning for you. And I'm so glad that you are sharing it with us and our this amazing audience on Healing Journeys Today. So thank you so much, Jolene. And thank you all for watching constantly. You guys are so amazing because I know that these testimonies mean so much to you. They are life-giving to you. That was why we're doing it because they were life-giving to me when I was sick. And I would go on Andrew Wombach Ministries and watch every healing journey that was there so that I could build myself up and, and have an understanding of like, well, if God did it for them, he's going to do it for me. And so that's why we listen to testimonies. It's just, it's better than watching a stupid movie that's going to bring fear into you, right? It's like, why not watch a testimony that's going to just do nothing but build you up and make you like realize like, wait, wait, I'm missing something here. God is so good and he wants me well. He wants me healed and whole. And so that's the way to do it, do these testimonies. So thank you so much. Go to healingjourneystoday.com and check out our uh, website. We've got newsletters there. There's ways of uh, partnering with us. Everything is on that website. So I really would uh, encourage you to go to that website and check it out. But for now, we will see you next week on our second episode of, I'm just going to say Jolene because I cannot pronounce her last name. Thank you. <laughs> I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.